Well, hi there. This is Scott Duffy from GetCloudSkills.com. And in today's video, I want to talk about changes to the Azure Administrator exam AZ-104. Now, I'm going to warn you that the changes to AZ-104 appear to be more significant, more relevant than sometimes what Microsoft does. So pay particular attention to this video, and I'll show you the before and after, and you can see the scope of the changes. Now, one of the things we can do here is we can go to the change log and we can see Microsoft's laying out what the changes are in broad detail and what the change is. So there's been some changes to the weighting of the various objectives. And there's been some changes that are classified as both minor or major. And you can see almost every section had as well as a deletion of an entire section. So this has been a wholesale change to the exam, but obviously uh, not enough to qualify for a new exam code. In the past, Microsoft has said if the exam changes by more than 30%, they roll that off into a new code. If they still follow that, then these changes fall under 30%. Still significant though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the new requirements on the left. So the skills measured as of July 28th and the old requirements on the right. All right. So um, let's scroll down to the percentages, the major objectives and their weightings. So the manage Azure identities and governance section has been bumped up by five additional percentage. So it went from 50 to 20 up to 20 to 25. Storage is the same, compute resources are the same. The virtual networking has been reduced by that 5%. And perhaps we're going to see the deletion of the monitoring section in there. And the final one, the monitoring of Azure resources is down to, it's the same 10%. All right, let's look at the Azure Identities and Governance first objective. We can see here that um, the first uh, sub-objective, Azure AD Users and Groups, has been reduced. And there's been some stuff shifted around, so we'll talk about that in a second. But no longer talking about bulk updates, guests accounts, device settings in the first objective, administrative units also being removed. And instead we have user and group properties. What was guest accounts became external users. Okay. Now I, if we scroll to the second section, uh, manage access, we'll see that it not only is it managing roles, but they've They've removed this concept of the custom role-based access control. So now you're just dealing with built-in roles. Assign roles at different scopes, that's the same requirement. So already we see uh, some significant changes. The next subjective is subscriptions and governance. We'll see policy, locks, tags, group subscription, costs, management groups. So that's the same. So what we've seen then to summarize this first section is removing of things like bulk updates, device settings, user and group properties. No, that's there. Administrative units and custom roles. Okay. So moving on to the second major objective, which is managing storage. Now that hasn't changed in terms of the percentage. Now it says configure access to storage. And it's, we're talking about storage firewalls and virtual networks. So this is network access, user access signatures, shared access signatures, stored access policies, that's in there, access keys, identity-based access for Azure files. That's a new requirement. And what they've done is they've moved, uh, so th there's requirements under encryption, and you'll see encryption is down here in the managing section and the AD authentication 
has been removed. Okay. All right. So it's the, the uh, second section used to be called manage data, and now it's called configure and manage storage accounts. They've removed the concept of the input and output jobs. The uh, storage explorer is still there. Storage redundancy is still there. Object replication is still there. And encryption was moved from the previous section. Finally, files and blobs. We can see more requirements on the left here. And so we've got configure a container, which is a new requirement. We've got uh, snapshots and soft deletes and blob versioning. All right, so that's the second major section. The third major section is compute resources. Now, one of the big changes to AZ-104 is they're starting to mention BICEP for the first time. Now, my friend Paulo Dichon has a brand new course on Azure BICEP. It's on my Udemy profile. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested in BICEP. But we're going to have to start looking at BICEP in the AZ-104 exam, which wasn't true before. So what you're seeing here is the concept of templates and ARM templates, things like that being an OR scenario, ARM template or a BICEP file, modified existing ARM template, modified existing BICEP file, a deploy an ARM template or compile a deployment as a BICEP file. So these are really just reflecting the addition of BICEP to the exam. It's been a while, so I'm glad that they finally added that. The concept of virtual machines. After adding Azure Compute Gallery just a few months ago, they've now removed Compute Gallery, which is fine. You can't really ask too many good exam questions on Compute Gallery, so that's perfectly fine to remove that. Moving resources is already there. Managing sizes and disks is uh, already there. Availability zones, availability sets, that's there, and scale sets. So configure VM network settings. So network settings does not appear on the new version of the exam. That's a pretty big a change if that's, yeah, that's true. All right, containers. So one of the big changes is the removal of the Azure Kubernetes service. So storage for AKS, scaling for AKS, Network Connections AKS, Update AKS. And what you end up with is a new requirement in Azure Container Registry that really wasn't addressed previously, and uh, container instances and container apps, and sizing and scaling for containers, including instances and apps. So they've actually made this, they simplified containers in AZ-104. Azure App Service. So this is pretty much the same creating an app service. This is secure, but this is configure certificates, custom domain names, backups, networking. It's all the same. They've just reworded it. Next up is virtual networking. And you see they've reduced the percentage from 20% down to 15%. So they're not going to take away the basics here. So virtual networks, peering, public IP addresses. They don't mention private, just public, user-defined routes, and they've got this new requirement for troubleshooting, and they've removed the DNS requirement, although I think the DNS is now under um, name resolution and load balancing, so they've just moved this requirement. All right, configure secure access to VNets, and so NSGs and ASGs, Bastion, this is all the same. They've uh, added to this load balancing section by mentioning name resolution. And so now they don't mention application gateway specifically, but it's still a load balancer. So it's in there. Finally, they've removed this whole section on virtual monitoring of virtual networking. So network watcher, uh, troubleshooting networking, troubleshooting VNets, monitoring on-premises connectivity. So whole section that's been removed from the exam. Finally, the last section is monitoring resources as a whole. The percentage has stayed the same. And we can see that they've got metrics, logs, 
uh, query and analyze logs, alert rules, monitoring of VMs. They have moved network watcher and connection monitor from the monitor section into here. They kind of snuck in this new requirement by removing the whole section. Finally, backup and recovery. So this is pretty much the same, right? Recovery services default, backup, backup policy, a site recovery failover and backup reports. So that, like I said, is significant amount of changes. My overall impression is this does make you change your study approach. And so there are a bunch of things you don't need to know anymore. And that doesn't necessarily need to be in your study plan. There's a bunch of new things that does need to be in your study plan. And overall, I think this might actually simplify things a little bit by removing AKS and removing some of the other things like private IP addresses and things like that. Custom role-based access control. They have made things a little bit simpler by removing a few things. And so all in all, this might be a little bit easier of an exam. Of course, adding bicep, that's just a whole new thing that needs to be learned. But besides that, pretty understanding of why they're making these changes. And I will be updating my course. My AZ-104 course will be updated for these new requirements. I'm going to, I think I do have bicep in there already. So I'll be adding things as needed or moving things around as we get into August here. This has been Scott Duffy from getcloudskills.com. Check out the link in the description for a discount on any of my Azure courses on Udemy. And if I can help you in any way learning AZ-104, passing the test, leave a comment, hit subscribe, thumbs up, all those things. Thank you very much. And until next time.